Tyler Hinchel, also known as Dr. Folklore. He's a musician from Portland who plays in the band Insomniac Folklore. Please welcome Tyler Hinchel. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you this evening. Oh, thanks for having me on. Now, I've never been to Portland, unfortunately. What can you tell me about your fair city? Um, it is a real place. It is a town filled with beauty and bridges and excellent donuts and coffee. Um, we are surrounded by more national forests than anywhere in the entire world. Now, how long has your band been playing from Portland? Um, the current lineup has been together for about two years. Um, Insomniac Folklore has been around for nearly a decade in different forms, being anywhere from just me solo with a guitar to whoever is available. Um, the band lineup has changed multiple times, and uh, unfortunately I've been the only constant. Now, I have heard your music described as tantrum folk. Was, is that accurate? Um, yeah. Um, I, I came up with the term myself. Um, people frequently ask me, what does insomniac folklore sound like? I'm like, well, it's kind of like Simon and Garfunkel, um, but kind of like the Dead Kennedys, and kind of like Bob Dylan and violent films. and. None of that seems to really add up, and so tantrum folk, um, kind of the heart of folk rock music, but then whatever else it demands at the moment it receives. So it's very versatile. Yeah, perhaps too versatile, some would say. As I understand, there is a strong music community in Portland, and you work with other bands and play with other bands um, from Portland. Yes, there are, there are a few bands we do um, network and play with from time to are time. Are they also this Tantrum Folk? Um, I have not met another Tantrum <laughs> Folk band at this point. Um, I actually have a hard time finding musicians and bands that we are sonically compatible with. Um, sometimes we do shows with my um, accordion player's other band called Carrier Pigeons. Um, they're very good. Um, We'll play if anyone who uh, is brave enough mm -hmm. to be posted on a bill alongside us, more or less. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get right to the important stuff. Ooh. There is a Wikipedia article about insomniac folklore. Are you aware of this? Um, I, I have, I've heard. Well, the article contains those dreadful words, citation needed. And I thought it would be a great ah. service to the world to provide Wikipedia with the citations it begs for. Okay. So... Let us see here. According to Wikipedia, your group has become known for their somewhat unpredictable live shows and their sense of camaraderie as a group. Do you concur? I do concur. Great. <laughs> Secondly, according to Wikipedia, Hinchel, meaning you, intends the project to be more about friendship than being a concise Band. Yes, I, I would. I also would agree with that um, because I think that's quoting me without quoting me. Um, yeah, I care more about people being part of this project who I like and I want to spend time with. Um, it's more important to me that we get along and we have our own little community and hold each other accountable than it is that everyone's amazing musicians. I can find musicians all over, but it's hard to find people who you actually can get along with in real life and actually want to spend time with. Um, a couple months ago, you played at Cornerstone, 2010. Yes. Now, how many Cornerstones have you played? Um, Insomniac Folklore has been at Cornerstone three years. Um, the first year was in... Um, 2002, I believe, and then did not return to Cornerstone until two years ago. And this, but this year, was that your first year by yourself? 
Um, my first year out there, I was out there by myself. This is my first year. This felt like my first year by myself because I've uh, grown accustomed to having a band more often than I had back then. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's actually my second time there solo, I suppose. Now, more recently, you played X Fest Northwest. Indeed. Tell me about that festival. X Fest. Um, it's a smaller festival, more built around community and family. Um, there's only probably four to five hundred people there. Um, it's in uh, Stevenson, Washington, which is right on the Columbia Gorge. It's surrounded by mountains and the Columbia River. Um, everyone just you know, I feel that music is more of an excuse for people to hang out and have fellowship. Um, by the end of a weekend, generally, a good amount of people there know each other, and um, yeah, just a great time for community. Mm -hmm. more, than, more than most festivals, I'd say, and for that it's pretty special. And I assume you were back with the rest of your band for that? Yeah, um, minus Aiden, who... Uh, saw fit to move to Pennsylvania last spring. <sighs> I'm working on forgiveness in my heart. Um, but his father, Randy, filled in and did very nicely. Excellent. Regarding EP and LP, um, where did you go to record these? Oh, well, EP was... The drum tracks were initially recorded at Sound Ghost Studio. The rest of the album was recorded at Psychedelic Media Circus, which is a little entity based in Southeast that is under my control. Hmm. Very good. I think so. Now, anyone who listened to your music for a while should quickly realize that you enjoy satire and irony. What do you like about those so much? Um, they might inspire thought because then you can say things that would otherwise be completely horrible, but, um, no, sometimes they catch people off guard, sometimes people understand them, sometimes people don't, but I, I like to encourage people to think, um, I like to hope that people are smart and can make their own judgments, um, sometimes it does not seem to be so much the case, but I still strive for a better world where people can think for themselves. Yeah. So for instance, the song, save, no, kill a baby, save a tree. You're not actually promoting killing babies. I, I'm not, I am not a big fan of killing babies. In fact, I would say I am, I am indeed opposed to killing babies. Hmm. Um... Yeah, I would say that song is satirical and saying really extreme things to prove a point. And your um, point is, in case someone missed it. Someone probably did. Um, basically, sometimes I feel that people perhaps hold care for the environment more than they hold care for people. Um, human life seems to be more and more diminished and cheapened, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't care for the planet and work to conserve and be smart with our resources. It's just, I don't think that humans should take a back seat mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Are there more uh, works you're going to be putting out? Yes. Um, there is another full-length record that is hopefully going to go in production um, sometime in the next calendar year. Um, it'll be an album that takes a 38 minute somewhat epic journey through the process of, uh, I'd say the album is essentially about love, God, madness, and dismemberment. <laughs> Sounds very complete. I hope so. And do you have a timeline planned, or is this just kind of in development? It'll be done when it is complete. Um, really, LP um, 
is an album that we've worked on for a long time and um, we still have not had that album as publicized as we'd like. Um, haven't pushed distribution on it very much yet, so I'd like to be sure that LP is available to everyone who cares to have it before we um, put too much into promoting a new record. So mm -hmm. the, the next record we'll start working on when we have free time and um, finish whenever, uh, whenever time permits. Mm -hmm. So no, no big rush at this point. Are you coming more to the Midwest in November, is that correct? That is correct. Are those also for some shows? Yes, um, I will actually be playing at um, the legendary Chuck's Basement mm -hmm. on uh, Halloween. Um, anyone out there who wants to come to a show in St. Louis on Halloween, I recommend you do so. Um, but yes, we'll be touring through be touring across country with Destroy Nate Allen in October and November, yes. Mm -hmm. And did you work with uh, Nate Allen on a recent record? Yeah, um, I actually had the privilege of uh, recording and producing the latest Nate Allen record. Um, I have not yet heard a mastered, finished copy of it, um, but I, I hope to get my own copy eventually. Is there any secrets you can tell us about that album? Boy, I wish I could. Um, now anything I, I do tell would, um, <sighs> there are subliminal messages I recorded backwards on the album when no one was around. Mm. Um, they're really low on the mix, but you may find yourself having a urges or rather compulsions to purchase things you've never thought of. Um, you may be compelled to also donate large amounts of money to a foundation that I control. Um. All the kids these days Living triple lives, but they can't hold on to war. We are made to be who we are and who we're made to be. Like God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit. Something to worship. Hey, look. 